Good morning, Unity of Indianapolis. Uh, if you want to, stand up. Sing along with us. Two, three, four. <laughs> Uh, please join me in our affirming our statement of truth. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good, omnipotent. of love is in this place and in all places and in all people. Knowing and accepting this, we bless all people, no matter their race, color, creed, abilities, gender identification, or expression of love. Knowing that there are many paths to God, many names for God, many faces of God, but only one God. And this God is expressing through all creation in many many ways. We come together today, whether in person or watching on Facebook Live, to experience and to express the Christ spirit that dwells within each of us. And so it is. And now we are ready to share today's daily word reading. Uh, I invite you to take in these words of spirit and divine alignment. Can everyone hear me? <coughs> Can't? Can they hear me now? No? They can't hear me. Okay. Um, is that better? Yes. That's better. Thank you, Ken. 
Okay. Um, I move in harmony with creative flow of inspiration. Sometimes I feel inspired by the words of others, and sometimes I am more inspired by action. Today, I take my inspiration from the story of Charles Fillmore, a businessman who marveled at his wife's complete healing from serious illness. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this prompted him to embark upon an intense period of prayer, meditation, and study that led to the founding in 1889 of Unity, which has become a global spiritual community. I take this story to heart and find my inspiration in my feelings of awe and wonder, love, or even healthy curiosity. Feeling an awakening of inspiration within me, I center my awareness in God. Divinely inspired, I move in harmony with the creative flow that blesses the work of my mind, my heart, and my hands. And from Job 32, verse 8, But truly it is the spirit in a mortal, the breath of the Almighty, that makes for understanding. And now let us all say, affirm together our own affirmation. I use my power of will to choose, to commit, and to be willing. Let's do that again. I use my power of will to choose, to commit, and to be willing. Let's proclaim this to the mountaintops. I use my power of will to choose, to commit, and to be willing. There, you just used your power of will. Awesome. All right, now let's prepare for our opening prayer and meditation with Michael Wright. Good morning, friends, and welcome. Let us come apart from the busyness of the world in this moment and center ourselves in the knowing that we are divine spirits sharing a human experience. We are guided by the love and wisdom of Mother, Father, Creator, God. We welcome you to this space. And now I ask that you focus on your breathing and to be consciously be aware that the very breath you're breathing is that of Mother, Father, Creator, God. It sustains us and allows us to be who we are meant to be in this world. Each one of us has an individual contribution and of vital importance. Be aware as we step into the space of your value as a spiritual being. Today let us focus on the power and aspect of joy. There's so many things that can cause us to feel happy. Fun times with people we love, our favorite pastimes, a lovely day, viewing a sunrise or sunset, or even revisiting a treasured memory. We realize that these feelings of happiness can be fleeting, just like rain clouds that can darken a sunny day. Our feelings of happiness can shift with the transient rhythms of the time. Joy, however, is different. It's a divine idea. It's constant and enduring and is always as near to each one of us as our next breath.
we realize that choosing to live in a state of joy keeps us spiritually grounded and emotionally free. Together, let us make the commitment to look beyond happiness to discover the joy from which it springs. We realize we can awaken to the sparkling, joy-like, jewel-like joy of each moment and claim it for ourselves. Joy is our choice and our divine right as an expression of God. We realize when searching for a new idea or way to express ourselves, we begin by turning within to spirit, where we are in this very moment, in this sacred space of our inner sanctuary. We realize that in the silence of prayer, our mind can expand and it opens to new means of expression. Let us be mindful to be grateful for the capacity to develop an idea and express it. And to take an idea and form a new way of thinking or doing. We realize that in this moment and in the challenges we face, day to day, new ways of thinking and relating to others is very important. Think of the many ways that this creativity, creativity takes shape. Creating art, writing, or playing music. For others, it could mean building or cooking or gardening. And yet, others, including ourselves, express creativity through volunteerism or other forms of service. Let us be aware that we are all expressions of spirit. Let us rest in this knowing for a few moments as we allow our minds to expand into who we are as a contribution. Yes, sweet spirit, we thank you for this opportunity to be a beautiful expression of spirit. And as individuals, as our unique creation is in expression, together we give thanks for that creative spirit within each one of us and acknowledge that beauty in all people and the outlet for this divine expression. We say thank you, God. Thank you. Amen and namaste. All right, let's meet and greet everybody. Just stand up, give everybody a wave, an air hug. And if uh, Facebook Live folks, good morning. Uh, type in your name. Give us a hello, hello, hello. We would like to hear from you. All right. Go ahead and sit back down. <laughs>
choose love. 1 Corinthians 13, New International Version, verses 1 through 3. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. I choose love. We're finishing up our month with a focus on the power of will. And so far, we've learned to be present, to be present-minded, to be in that moment, and to be connected with spirit, with the universe, with God, that we can simply think, this is what I want. As Louise said, her friend thought, I would like to have a wedge of lemon. Shortly thereafter, the waiter said, brought a wedge of lemon and said, this is for you. We also learned to stretch beyond where we are, to, to go out of the boundaries that we have set on ourselves, to, to grow and to expand. And we've learned to be mindful to be mindful of our business. And our business is that the, the best for everyone, the best for mankind, the best for our, our planet should be our business. And I'm glad that last week Ed had reminded us that the yearly theme at Unity is to be um, centered no matter what. And that can be hard to do. And our power of will, our affirmation has been, I use my power of will to choose, to commit, and to be willing. When we're in a chaotic world and we want to be centered, we have to use that power of will. We have to will the cent- to be centered. We have to will be willing to change 
from being swept up in the chaos to being able to be centered in our being and be centered as God and in God. Now, there are religious scholars who say that we do not have this power, that it's all predetermined, that, let's say, God has said on December 11th, 1965, at 1.08 p.m., Dick and Nina Davis are going to have a son, and they're going to name him Michael Everett. To he is going to go to school, and he's going to play the saxophone, and he's going to be in choir and band, and then he's going to go to Ball State and get all kinds of messed up in his life. <laughs> he's going to discover theater. He's going to start doing theater, um, and on and on and on and on until a date that I don't know, but allegedly God knows when that date and time and what will be the cause of my death. There are some people that believe that, so no matter what they do in their life, it doesn't matter because God is in control of every bit of that. My question would be then why? I don't think that we are all little action figures that God is playing with and has determined, written out these stories of like, well, this is going to be Todd, and here's Marty, and they're going to show up at these times. I think we have some control over that. At Unity, Unity, we say that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We co-create our lives with God. We have the free will to change, to, to do, and to change or to change our minds. Metaph the metaphysical meaning of free will. So looking at the revealing word, it says, free will is man's inherent freedom to act as he determines. There can be no perfect expression without perfect freedom of will. If man determines to act in accord with divine law, he builds harmony, health, happiness, and eternal life, which is heaven. If a woman determines to act in accord with divine law, she builds harmony, health, happiness, eternal life, which is heaven. If someone who is non-binary determines to act according with divine law, they build harmony, health, happiness, and eternal life, which is heaven. We often sing a song at the beginning of the service, heaven is here right now. So I looked up in the revealing word again, metaphysical meaning of heaven. Heaven, the Christ consciousness, the realm of divine mind, a state of consciousness in harmony with the thoughts of God. Heaven is everywhere present. It is the orderly lawful adjustment of God's kingdom in man's mind, body, and affairs. God visioned two planes of consciousness, the heaven and the earth, or more properly, the heavens and the earth. One is the realm of pure ideas, the other of thought forms. Heaven is the orderly realization of divine ideas. Earth is the manifestation of these ideas. So we have our thoughts, and then we manifest them into reality. We have our thought. I would like to have a lemon wedge. A lemon wedge shows up. So many of you know um, I just finished a, a long run of Sound of Music at Beef and Boards, where I played the butler. Uh, and every performance, every, every night or, after, or during every matinee, I would be backstage before my entrance. And there was the scene going on on stage was between Maria and the Mother Abbess. Uh, it's when the Mother, Reverend Mother, is going to send Maria to the Von Trapp house. Uh, because she has been uh, not behaving as they think a nun should behave in the Abbey. Uh, she's using her free will to sing whenever she wants because that's what she likes to do. But the Reverend Mother asked Maria a question. She says, what is the one thing you have learned while living in the Abbey? And Maria responds, to find out what is the will of God and to do it wholeheartedly. 
And since we've been looking at the power of will all month and eight shows a week, I kept hearing that, que- that, that thing, w- to find out what is the will of God and to do it wholeheartedly. So what is the will of God? It's a good question. Uh, I also want to say when I often experience when i uh, putting together a talk and I have an idea that I would like to do, I, it, it seems to manifest uh, in my life going on and using the power of will. So I had some ideas of what I thought this talk would be, and I'm trying to will them in, and they weren't working. And I had this idea of how, how to use the power of, of will in our lives. I was ignoring what the lesson that I was going to try to teach you. I wasn't doing it. I was trying to go. I was trying to force it. I was trying to use my will to force this idea, and I wasn't using the technique or the, that I want to give you guys. When I finally did that, then I had a better idea of what this talk was going to be about. So what is the will of God? So I thought, well, let's look at unity principle number one. God is everywhere and in everything. God is good. First John says God is love. So I would like to say that the will of God is to be the presence of love. Unity principle number two, we are, we are created in the image of God, and our very essence is divine, therefore we are good. We are love. Unity principle number three, we create our life experience through our way of thinking. Which reminds me of this story that I saw uh, on, on Facebook. There are these two dogs. This first dog walked into this room and he came out with his tail wagging and he was so happy. And the second dog walked into the house and he came back growling and angry. And the person thought, was like, what is in this room that one dog would be so happy coming out and the other one would be so angry and, and mad? So they went into the room and the room was full of mirrors. The first dog saw a room full of happy dogs. The second dog saw a room of angry dogs and scared dogs. Because life is a reflection of us, is a reflection of you. And if you use, um, Ed and I have both talked about Indra's net before, uh, where it's this net of jewels and at each one, this jewel is reflecting everything. And we are those jewels. So yes, what we see out in life is a reflection of us, but it's also a reflection of everyone else. So just remember that, that what we see and experience is our own reflection. Unity principle number four, our lives can be changed and transformed through prayer. Prayer is centering ourselves in and as the divine. Principle number five, it's not enough to know these principles. We must live the truth that we know. So looking at the five principles, I think it is the will of God that we know, it's, it, we know that God is love. We know that we are love. Our thoughts create our experience, and we manifest those divine thoughts here on earth. And when we align with spirit in meditation and prayer and daily practice, we can transform our lives toward our highest good. Living these principles is living in Christ consciousness. This is the will of God. Perhaps. According to uh, Maimonides, if I said that correctly, uh, he is a medieval um, Jewish philosopher uh, from like the 1200s. Uh, and he's, uh, he was born in uh, Cordova, Spain, which is the southern region of Spain. And when he was living, uh, the southern part of Spain, the Andalusia region, was in control uh, by uh, Muslims. And so he studied Islam. He was Jewish. He studied his Jewish teachings. 
He also studied Islam. Uh, and this is just a, just a little bit of information on him. Uh, and if it weren't for a Muslim friend of his, he would have been um, executed. Uh, but his Muslim friend saved him, and so therefore the family just then moved out of Spain and into uh, Egypt. But he says free will is granted, so free will is granted to every man. If he deserves, if he desires to incline towards the good way and be righteous, he has the power to do so. And if he desires to incline toward the unrighteous way and be a wicked man, he also has the power to do so. We have a choice. We make choices every day. Some of them are conscious choices. Some of them are or unconscious, subconscious decisions. We make choices um, all the time. Uh, we make choices on what we're going to, to wear in the morning. And sometimes those choices are based off of, I would like to wear that. Sometimes it's based off of, this is what society expects me to put on, so I'll put on that. It's still a choice. You make each of those choices. So I want to go back to the metaphysical interpretation again. There can be no perfect expression without perfect freedom of will. So Jesus was that perfect expression. Jesus had that same free will that we do. And when you determine to act in accord with divine law, you build harmony, health, happiness, and eternal life. Jesus was acting in harmony with divine life. He was explaining heaven is here on earth. The kingdom of God is within you. So if I may speak for God, as God, for God, with God, God's will is for us to find and create harmony, health, happiness, abundance, and eternal life by aligning with the divine. I often use divine in, in talking about God, and I learned recently uh, the Aramaic word that, that Jesus used to, uh, in talking about God was Abba, which we have translated often as Father. Uh, Abba is a term of, of endearment, meaning beloved. Um, you, can, you can refer to your mother as Abba. Your mother can refer to you as Abba. I can refer to all of you as Abba. You are my beloved. So by aligning with, with the beloved, the divine, with God, then we can create this harmony and abundance in 2014, this congregation, a group of this congregation, gathered together to put together our mission and vision statement one Saturday afternoon, or maybe it was a multitude of days. But, I remember, but we put together our vision statement, and our vision statement is how we would like to see the world, how, or how, in, in what, that goal that we would like to see the world as. And our vision statement came to be Centered as God, life expresses love, harmony, and abundance. This is the very definition of what happens when we act in accord with divine law. Is we create happiness and love and abundance and harmony. So we're going to do a little meditation. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this meditation or not, and I've decided now that I'm going to. Uh, so back in 2014, I wrote a little chant. That is our vision statement, and it's a nice way of, of centering yourself. So when you are out in the world and you are in chaos, or you're trying to make a decision and decide or discern whether this is in line with the divine, if this is for the betterment of mankind. So if you're minding your business, mankind, you can possibly use this chant to help center yourself. 
you guys can just stay there and sing from out there. So just go ahead and find yourselves comfortable in your seats. Put your feet flat on the floor. Closing your eyes or lowering your gaze. Take a deep breath in. And let that out. We're going to focus in on your heart. St. Irenaeus, I believe is the name, had said, the glory of God is a fully alive human being. Fully alive. When we live out the will of God to its fullest, that's what Maria was looking for, we are expressing the glory of God. When we sing out of joy, we are expressing the glory of God. When we weep at a loss, we are expressing the glory of God. 
When we smile at a stranger, we are expressing the glory of God. When we say a kind word, we are expressing the glory of God. When we choose love, we are expressing the glory of God. 1 John 4, 16, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. 1 Corinthians 13 says, without love, we are nothing. Earlier we sang, right before the talk, we sang, peace in my life peace in my family, peace for our planet is growing because I choose love. Love is always present. It's what we're made of. It's unity principle number two. We are a part of each other. We are one. One tie that binds us. One loving family. One Choice unites us. Let this be the one. I choose love. I choose love. So it is. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Let us choose joy and love and peace and harmony. <laughs> Let's just be happy. <laughs> um, now it's time to prepare for our love offering. Um, I invite you to go to our website, unityofindy.org, and donate online, or mail a check to Unity of Indianapolis at 907 North Delaware, 46202. And as you prepare your offering, we'd like to acknowledge any first timers. If you're here with us um, and not uncomfortable, do so if you'd raise your hands. <laughs> um, this, uh, by the way, um, this is not a stranger to me. This is my friend Carol Franz, who lives in my neighborhood and is also, we like to say, Sean's adoptive mother. Um, so she's here today um, because we're looking forward to Sean's celebration of life next Saturday at 2 o'clock. And she's been participating in the planning of that. So we welcome you, Carol, today. We're glad you're here with us. So now please take your offering in your hand or visualize your gift. I invite you to hold it in your offering in heart-centered intention as we affirm our blessing over our offering. Together, divine love working through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, all that I receive, and I am grateful. Thank you. All right, let's stand and sing the peace song. Picture the whole world standing hand in hand, heart to heart, soul to soul.
The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. When the walls come tumbling down, I choose joy, I choose joy. When the world stops spinning round, I choose joy, I choose joy. When my thoughts are the blue, when the music's not the blue, when I'm out to watch the tune, I choose joy, I choose joy. When hate is all I see, I choose joy, I choose joy. Joy, 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 I choose joy. 